Americans entered 2022 anxious to put the pandemic behind them and get back to normal life. But the pandemic had already left an indelible mark on the economy. Labor shortages and supply chain disruptions sent prices soaring on everything from gas to groceries, automobiles to airfare. We also have to remember the other exogenous shocks, including war in the Ukraine, China lockdowns, volatility in the energy prices. So we're almost in this period of a perfect storm that was triggered by a pandemic. Eggs were up 39 percent, milk 17 percent, beef and pork nearly 7 percent. Overall, grocery prices were on track to increase by more than 11 percent during 2022. Gas prices began the year at about $3.38 per gallon and peaked at a national average of 510 on June 14th. Airfare took off in 2022, up 42 percent year over year by September. The semiconductor chip shortage and higher raw materials costs made automobiles both more expensive and less available. The average price of a new vehicle is up more than $3,400 this year. Used car prices jumped 42 percent. The Federal Reserve reacted to the skyrocketing inflation as it historically has by hiking interest rates to slow the economy. And that means even money now costs more money. Mortgage rates, 30 years, below 3 percent. Now we're approaching 7 percent. The Fed raised its benchmark interest rate a quarter of a point in March, in May another half percent, and starting in June, an eyebrow raising four three-quarter point hikes in a row. Another half percent this month for a total rate hike of 4.25 percent in one year. All of this is going to raise interest rates, increase the cost of capital, decrease our ability to borrow because it increased the cost of capital and it slows us down. Experts agree the rate hikes are not over, but they are slowing. And as we wind up 2022, there are the first signs of improvement. Year-over-year -year inflation, which peaked at 9.1% in June, has fallen to 6% at year's end. After six months of contraction, GDP grew at an annualized rate of 2.9% in the third quarter, and gas prices have settled back down to last January's numbers. So what's ahead? Professor Mark says volatility will continue, and that's what we have to plan for. We as individual consumers face relative price changes across a, an array of goods which makes our purchasing decisions more difficult. So we need to anticipate and plan for the volatility